Hey everyone. Well, it's late April and we didn't get battery day as promised from Elon, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about the Model 3 battery, how it works, uh, what's unique about it, what makes it special, uh, and some of the signals that uh, we can see on our phone with uh, Teslax or, or other tools. Uh, so stay tuned for some technical stuff if you're interested. So going back a bit to the beginning of Tesla, they had one innovation that's really put them ahead of everyone else, and that's using this battery pack in the floor. Uh, and, and the reason that was successful from the beginning is because instead of using large batteries, maybe in the center console and in the rear that took up a lot of space, uh, and making batteries from scratch that take a lot of science and innovation and, and time, um, they took a standard 18650 laptop battery. Uh, these batteries were by far the most common uh, lithium-ion cells in the 90s. Uh, they were used in most laptops. They were a lot bigger then, and sometimes you had like a, uh, extras you could clip on the back of them. Um, but they're readily available, and not that they were cheap. Lithium-ion was always way more expensive than uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeables, but uh, they were cheaper than developing your own cells. And so um, Tesla took thousands of these, put them together, made a floor pan out of them, and stuck them underneath the car where they really didn't take extra space. And the real advantage is you had thousands of batteries in parallel, which really gave you a lot of instantaneous power that you could use for, well, high speed. So uh, they didn't really use that in the Roadster. The Roadster, they were in the back. They did use 18650s, but... Um, Roadster was kind of started before Elon, and that innovation, which really started the Model S, is what really helped Tesla succeed in the early days when uh, they really couldn't make their own cells and technology. So uh, what makes the Model 3 unique is they finally switched out these 18650 cells that they've been using for over 10 years in the Model S, and they went to a 2170 cell. So it's a little bit bigger. But not by all that much. Um, but in multiple numbers and packaging is where this makes a big difference. This battery has a lot more power. So the easiest way to see the difference in these batteries when I talk about packaging is um, in these uh, two flashlights that I have here. This is an 18650 flashlight and a 2170 flashlight. If you look at these, there's pretty much no size difference. It's a little bit thicker, but you can't even tell. Um, this is only longer for the optics, but they're basically the same size. This flashlight has four times the power of this one. And that's because the 2170 battery allows you to draw a lot more power than an 18650. Uh, and, and you can also charge it faster. Um, and so it kind of illustrates the advantage of, uh, that Tesla's riding on in the Model 3. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description for these flashlights if you're interested. These, both of these are extremely bright. This thing can light up a mountain. So the Model 3 has 4,416 of these 2170 batteries under the floor of the whole cabin of the car. Uh, and as we know, it gives it a lot of power, but it gives it a, a low weight distribution. It's great for driving. Um, they've split the batteries up into, uh, into groups. So they take, um, I believe, it's 46 of these in parallel, and they call that a brick. It looks like a brick. It's like this big. And there's uh, 96 of those bricks in the whole battery pack in, a, in at least a long-range 74-kilowatt-hour uh, pack in the, in the Model 3. Um, and so uh, the, the computers in the Model 3 kind of watch every single one of those bricks because their batteries in parallel, um, so they don't monitor each individual cell, but there's 96 bricks for them to manage. And uh, it kind of um, dictates how the battery performs, uh, the limits to the performance of the car and the charging, and, um, and the range. So we're going to look at those signals a little bit closer, and I'll, I'll continue to explain uh, how this all works. Speaking of the battery, it's all hidden under the floor for the most part, but there is a part that you can see and it's below the rear seat. It's actually pretty easy to access. Um, and so I'll show you back there now. So under this rear seat, there's two clips and it pulls right out. Uh, and it allows you to access what's called the penthouse. This is actually part of the battery pack and it rises in the back of it. Um, and all of the electronics 
and computer systems, the BMS controller, uh, the high voltage controllers, uh, and the contactors are all back here. You can only see some of it, of course, there's a big metal panel that's covering it and protecting your butt. Um, it's a good point to talk about all the things that are going on back here in the battery. Um, just like many of the other systems, uh, Tesla designs all of their kind of components in the car to, to operate on their own. Um, it, it, in other words, it does its own thinking for itself, and the battery determines, uh, for example, how fast it can charge and discharge and sends that out over the network. That's one of the signals that we can look at in Tesla X. And, and so that the motors are only allowed to perform as much as the battery allows them to. And so a lot of that's decisions made in here. Um, so there's a, a couple different main parts of this. There's, there's the BMS, the battery management system, that uh, is the most common thing you may have heard of, that um, manages the the charge uh, of all the cells or the, the bricks. Um, there's a separate high voltage controller. Um, you could consider them the same, but they are technically two separate computers. Um, and that's managing the safety components, the isolation, the contactors. Contactors, by the way, are just giant relays that are made for very high current um, with, a, with a couple other de um, design ideas in them. Um, there's also the, uh, the power conversion system, PCS. So that PCS, first of all, takes the 400 volts and converts that to 12 volts. So that's kind of equivalent to the alternator in your ICE car. Um, actually, it does a little bit in reverse because it's, what's a little unusual here is uh, you don't want to close those contactors, those relays, with, without any voltage. You want to have the same voltage on both sides or you have a giant spark. So the, uh, that PCS actually converts backwards 12 volts up to about 400 volts to pre-charge the other side of those contactors before they close. It does that every time. But that's one of those things where if you don't have a good 12 volt battery, it can't pre-charge the system and close the, the contactor to the main high voltage battery and your car essentially can't start. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things. Uh, a 12 volt jump starter is useful, just as useful for a Tesla as it is for any ICE car. Um, we also have the battery charger here. Um, the battery charger is not the thing that you plug in your wall. That's really just an, ad an adapter. Um, the battery charger here has um, really th uh, three 16-amp chargers in parallel. Um, in North America, they, they work in, in tandem. And uh, basically, if you put in 120 volts AC or 220 or 240 or whatever, whatever uh, you throw at it, it, uh, it will convert the AC... To, uh, to the high voltage DC to charge the battery. Um, so that's all back here as well. And you can actually see the, the two big wires that um, come from the charge port in the trunk. Um, and so that's probably the only high voltage thing that you really see here. Um, the other side you can see the 12 volt uh, output. The other important thing that this does is monitor isolation. Uh, isolation is checking how that it's guaranteeing there's very high resistance between the high voltage system and the body of the car, the ground, everything else. Obviously, you don't want anyone being electrocuted. The high voltage can kill someone instantly. Um, and so it performs an isolation test every time it start, starts up and won't allow the connection, but it continuously checks that isolation. So if a cable was cut or worn, anything went wrong, it will actually cut the battery, if the battery's already connected, it'll, it'll blow that pyrofuse. That's another thing that's back here is the quote-unquote pyrofuse. What the heck is that? Well, it's a giant fuse um, that has to be able to interrupt the full current of the battery, which is 1,200 amps. Uh, interrupting, interrupting that much current on a giant thick bus bar basically would take an enormous big heavy fuse, but instead they use pyrotechnics. Uh, that's why it's called a pyrofuse, and it literally blows a hole into it instantaneously. So it has to be controlled by a computer. Uh, the computers need to be very reliable. So that's blown whenever you get in an accident and the airbags fire for safety, um, or if uh, isolation test fails and probably a few other things. Um, and so a lot of times uh, your battery will die again because it can't provide the 12 volts, and so you really only have a couple hours of 12 volts. So a lot of people get in an accident, even if it's small, and the car works, and they come back to it, and it's completely dead. Well, it needs a 12-volt jump, and you need to replace that power fuse. Chances are you do those, and it's probably fine again. 
So let's talk a little bit about um, the software and the algorithms and, and the intelligence inside the battery pack, the, the BMS, um, and how it thinks, how it, how it works. Uh, and we can use your phone now and Teslax um, and all the signals on the CAN bus to look into those signals live and try to figure out what's going on. So everyone knows what the state of charge is. That's the number on the screen. That's kind of a lie. That's a software estimate of a software estimate times three or four. <laughs> uh, when we go in onto the phone, we can see some more in-depth state of charges when we read them from the BMS. Um, again, in Tesla, the you can see the UI state of charge is the same as what's on the screen, but there's actually a few others that come out of the BMS, so this is 71%. And so the difference is usually a cor uh, temperature correction. If it's really, really cold, you'll get that snowflake, and, this, and the UI one will be much lower. Uh, there's probably a couple other reasons that the software adjusts that uh, for the user. So, um, that state of charge, how is that magically evolved? Well, when you say how charged is, is a battery and you think of an alkaline or something, yeah, I guess it's the voltage. It's really the voltage under load. Um, and, uh, well, if you're ever driving the car around and watching the voltage and the current, they swing wildly between... Uh, you know, low 300s and 400 volts. So you can't just, you know, your state of charge value would be going up and down. It'd be like the old-fashioned gas tank uh, meters where you'd see it bounce up and down. Um, and so we can't just use voltage for state of charge. So what it really does is what's called Coulomb counting. Um, and it's going to watch the current of the battery and the load of the motors and take all that into effect over a long time. Say you're driving for an hour. Um, and it'll, it'll sit there and count that energy, look at the voltage over a long, even time, hopefully make the measurements, hi Blue Jay, hopefully make those measurements um, while it's sitting stable, maybe before you started driving and after it's been parked for a bit, and uh, make a more intelligent uh, estimation of the state of charge, but it also uses those opportunities to recalculate the capacity of not just the whole pack, but each of those individual bricks that I talked about. And you'll see that the we have a min and max brick voltage, for example. Uh, so I again said that those bricks are cells in parallel, uh, so it's still going to have the voltage of one cell. You know, lithium ion cells usually around 3.7 to 4 volts. And so uh, you can see uh, my all of my bricks in the car, the lowest one's at 3.970, the highest one's at 3.976. And uh, you might talk about uh, battery balancing. That's that's a 0 0.006 six millivolt uh, worst case difference between those bricks, um, and so uh, we talk about bal battery balancing. What battery balancing is is um, maybe while the car's sitting idle, um, and hopefully with the batteries charged up a bit higher, it's actually got a little a bunch of little internal resistors in there um, where it can discharge slowly discharge individual bricks in a battery pack. This is how, you know, any large lithium-ion battery pack works. So, um, and and as far as we know, the secret sauce for, for Tesla is to charge above, above 4 volts, above 85%, let's say 90 to be safe, um, so it's high enough, and um, it's got to sit for a while, and the BMS will decide, all right, I'm going to take this opportunity to balance the the pack, and it'll add resistors to all of the higher bricks and bring them down to the voltage of the lower bricks, and hopefully it literally can take days to do so. It's not something that you can just charge to 100 and expect to be done in an hour. It, it can take not just overnight, but several days to get everything at the same level. It's not that big of a deal, by the way. All right, so you obviously can't drain any lower than a certain voltage is not good for the battery. So the lowest minimum brick voltage is going to limit the whole battery. But I mean, you're going to get an extra five millivolts, it's barely any extra power. So if people go crazy about balancing their battery. You really don't need to worry about it. If you really care about doing it, it's a couple times a year. Um, the biggest benefit to balancing the battery, not just get a little bit extra range and power, but it kind of recalibrates all the al algorithms in that BMS for your range. You'll notice I always just keep this on battery percentage, just like my phone and everything else. You, you leave your phone and tell you how many hours of time you have. No, you just have percentage. Um, people leave that on 
range, but that range is just a lie. I mean, I never drive it at a watt hour rating of 233 or whatever the heck Tesla the EPA came up with this. Um, so that number's not accurate anyway, and of course conditions change. So a balancing will give you a more accurate range. Uh, and um, another thing you can look at that people always talk about, and I have at the bottom of Tesla X here, is uh, call it a battery full kilowatt hours. It's 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 currently what the uh, it's taking all those bricks together. Um, there's a signal in here called uh, BMS CAC min. It's calculated amp hour capacity of each brick. Um, so the smallest brick, that's probably the one that's 3.97 volts, has got 203.5 amp hours. It got that estimate when I ma last made a big long drive, which by the way I've barely driven the past six weeks because we've been stuck at home. It's been a while, things are not as good as they normally would be. So, since it's been a while, this estimates that my battery capacity is only 72.0 kilowatt hours. This is usually more around 74. By the way, Tesla sells these cars with 74 kilowatt hour batteries. Um, but you do have a signal uh, in another message um, that's the original energy of the battery. This is kind of what it shipped out of the factory with, 77.8. So, so basically, if, if you look at the graph over time, and uh, a lot of us use Teslify, uh, it does a pretty good job capturing, it's, it's kind of your battery degradation, but it's only the degradation of these energy estimates. It's not really the permanent degradation of battery. If you give it some time, charge it to 90%, give it some extra days to, to calibrate, you'll get that, that capacity back. And temperature affects that as well. So in the winter time, it's always gonna be worse. But, um, you know, to go from 77 to 72 is already hardly any loss. I'm at, uh, what am I, 24,000 miles, two years old. Um, but I, again, it's probably more 74. If I took this for a good drive, a charge, and let it do everything, this, this poor car's not been used the last few weeks. We've, we haven't been commuting. Um, so these are the things that you can look at in Tesla X to tell you what's going on in your battery if you really cared. Uh, i got little states like the, the, the battery state here. It's in uh, support. It's just sending out 12 volts. It's not really doing anything. If I, if I start the, uh, the motors here, it switches to drive. Um, we have the contactor state. The contactor state's gonna be open if, it, if the high voltage battery wasn't connected. That's the big click you hear when the car's been sleeping. Um, but the, there's another mode of contactors to allow the battery to connect externally to the charger directly for supercharging. Um, so you can see that in there as well. The big thing I've talked about in previous videos is the battery temperature. And as we've been sitting here, it's been warming up. I've been warming up as well, sitting in the sun. Um, and that's why I like having the temperature right on my dashboard, uh, right on the screen, because it, in, especially in the cold temperatures, it really defines the performance of your car, your, your regen rate, um, how fast you'll charge at a supercharger. All these things are very dependent on the battery being warm. The battery likes to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and so that's where I've had to check that my previous video where I go into depth on that battery temperature, battery temp percentage. And uh, one of these days I'll go to a, a V3 supercharger and, and test that uh, theory out. So that's my quick run through of the battery. Uh, I hope that helps you understand a little bit more. Um, but if you don't, I completely understand. Uh, leave a question in the comments below or, or get in touch with me. I'm happy to explain things more in depth. If you want to see a video on some other topic or something more in-depth on the battery, let me know. Um, I would love suggestions for more videos. Um, again, ch check the links below for uh, Teslax again, which is an awesome app for your phone to see all these details. Um, and again, scan my Tesla and a couple of other ones are coming along. Uh, these are great little things. Uh, and as you know, I've got something coming soon here to, get, to mount your dashboard. Uh, I have my battery temperature here because, as I said, that kind of defines everything. Um, my battery power and everything else. I love watching that stuff because I'm a nerd. So thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more interesting tech videos.